In this video, I'm sharing my full review of one of the largest crypto ecosystems, the Polygon network. Ethereum scalability is one of the most pressing needs for the entire crypto space. And so far, Polygon has established itself as an early leader in getting the job done. But will they stay at the top or are they gonna get lapped by their competitors? Welcome back to the Virtual Bacon channel where I teach you how to build wealth with crypto. Before I begin today's video, I would like to mention that this video is purely for entertainment and educational purposes only and is in no way financial advice. If you've seen my other videos recently, you would have noticed that I've been making a lot of content about Ethereum layer 2 ecosystems. And this is because I think this is one of the biggest narratives in the crypto space this cycle and layer 2s will truly bring Ethereum the help it needs to go mainstream by establishing unique verticals to tackle scalability together instead of focusing on the individual siloed layer 1 blockchains. So far in my ecosystem highlight series, I've covered other layer 2 projects like Arbitrum and CK sync and of course i couldn't leave out the polygon network this is one of the oldest and most popular layer twos for enterprise adoption if you want to check out those other ecosystem highlights they're linked in the description below and don't forget to subscribe for my upcoming layer 2 comparison video where i'll highlight what makes each one special in the overall scalability wars. But for now, let's look at what makes Polygon such a popular project and what's in store for the purple giant going forward. Polygon's meteoric rise started with JT Kanani, Sandeep Naiwal, and Anurag Arjun, who founded the company together in 2017. Fast forward to today, and the main figurehead that represents Polygon today is its founder Sandeep. He is often seen as the Charles Hoskinson, Gavin Wood type of spokesperson for the Polygon network. The company behind is now called Polygon Lab, based in California and currently has around 600 employees spanning across India and the United States mainly. And have you ever wondered why MATIC is the ticker symbol for the Polygon token? This is because the network was originally called the MATIC network, which started as a standalone sidechain with its own validator and consensus, instead of being a Ethereum layer 2. In February of 2021, they rebranded from MATIC to Polygon and pivoted their vision from a standalone layer 1 to a full suite of layer 2 scale solutions for Ethereum. Now you know. And while Polygon is one of the biggest projects in crypto today, some of its earliest funding rounds were incredibly small and lucrative. In fact, Polygon's early days were heavily reliant on Binance, with this token going through the Binance Launchpad in April 2019. This was the best Binance Launchpad ICO ever, as there was 19% of the total supply being sold to everyday investors, with an unbelievable price of 0.263 cents per Matic. This means public investors of the Matic token on the Binance Launchpad in 2019 made over 1,000x returns by the 2021 bull market peak. When it comes to large VC funding, however, Polygon only started to attract them in 2022, securing a $450 million private sale of its Matic token led by Sequoia Capital India, SoftBank, Galaxy Digital, and even Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary. Somehow, they managed to sell most of the Matic tokens at the bull market top to large VC investors. Okay, now let's dive into Polygon's core technology and why its pitch was even so intriguing in the first place. At its core, the Polygon network takes a very different approach from other Ethereum scaling solutions, which focuses on building one main layer 2 network. Polygon instead chooses to position itself as a pluggable framework consisting of several layer 2 solutions that allow for faster and cheaper transactions on Ethereum, the same promise as everyone else. But depending on the use case from public users, DeFi degens, or enterprises, they can all pick and choose their poison. This way, Polygon almost acts as the front-end portal to access Ethereum. Polygon's first product is its proof-of-stake sidechain, the Matic Network. This network launched in 2019 and was their old vision, but this is still the main network most people are using today when they choose Polygon. A common misconception about today's Polygon network is that it is actually a sidechain instead of a layer 2 rollup, which is built on top of Ethereum. The Polygon POS sidechain is its own layer 1 blockchain right now that runs in parallel with Ethereum and has its own validator set and consensus. Currently, Polygon Network has 100 validators and all of them had to go through an interview process before they could join the Polygon Network. This means the network validators are permissioned 
by Polygon. And the blockchain is pretty centralized, but more on that later. All transactions on the Polygon POS network are periodically backed up with Ethereum. So you still have the data availability like other Ethereum layer twos, but from a scalability and developer perspective, they are quite different. The Polygon sidechain can process up to 7,000 transactions per second in theory, but is currently operating at only 33 transactions per second. Hey, Dennis from the future here. So I made a mistake about this part saying that Polygon only has 30 transactions per second versus Ethereum's 15. Actually, Ethereum right now can do 30 transactions per second, but Polygon's proof of stake sidechain can do up to 65,000 transactions per second. Very fast, very industry leading, almost as fast as Solana. Uh, other sidechains like BSC, AVAX can do between one to 10,000 transactions per second. For all intents and purposes, the speed uh, transactions throughput for all of these sidechains and layer ones are about the same. But where Polygon really lacks is in the finality side of the transaction. So what I mean by that is whenever you submit a transaction on Arbitrum or BSC, the transaction goes through maybe uh, under five seconds delay when you swap on Uniswap. On BSC, PancakeSwap, you wait maybe 10 seconds. On Polygon, however, because the network design is very legacy, sometimes you need to wait one to two minutes before the transaction actually gets confirmed and shows up on Etherscan or Polygon Scan. This is the main issue that I find with transacting on Polygon. It's not they cannot handle a lot of dApps. There are a ton of dApps uh, all functioning together on Polygon right now. Their scalability is very high, but when it comes to actual user experience, for whatever reason, it feels very clunky. Just go try it out today. Swap on B. BSC, swap on Arbitrum and swap even on Ethereum, then do the same thing on Uniswap and uh, on Uniswap on Polygon and you'll see that the Polygon's transaction will confirm the slowest. You have to wait the longest. That's the main issue I have with Polygon from a user perspective today. Scalability is not an issue, but the user experience is still lacking. Okay, back to the video. Now, from a developer perspective, the biggest benefit of Polygon's sidechain over other layer twos is its low transaction costs. A Uniswap trade usually costs less than one cent in gas fees. This is a lot cheaper than real layer twos like Arbitrum, which usually costs six to 10 cents per trade. I suspect this is because Arbitrum is a real rollup and has to store a lot more batched transactions onto Ethereum, which requires more gas fees. But obviously this is still better than paying $5 per transaction on Ethereum mainnet. Depending on the use case, this might not be that big of an issue. Now, the Polygon POS network is very old, having launched in 2019. This means they are technically one of the first alternative layer ones to launch, which supported the Ethereum virtual machine or EVM. So in that perspective, they were actually ahead of the curve in the Ethereum scalability wars. Their worst design is understandable then, given the network launched a year earlier than BSC and Avalanche. Although the Polygon POS network is nothing special, there are actually way more powerful scaling solutions under the Polygon brand. The most notable one is the Polygon ZK EVM, which was just announced and launched on March 27th of 2023. This is one of the first ZK rollup layer twos that fully support the Ethereum virtual machine hence the name ZK EVM. ZK stands for zero knowledge and ZK rollups have been long seen as the end game scaling solution for Ethereum. Don't take my word for it, Vitalik himself has openly said that ZK rollups is the future of Ethereum. For a full detailed review of what ZK EVM means, make sure to check out my ZK Sync deep dive video as they are the other ZK EVM leader aside from Polygon. It's linked in the description. In short, ZK EVM rollups like Polygon on ZK and ZK Sync provide the same user experience and developer experience as Ethereum mainnet or other rollups like Arbitrum. Anyone can seamlessly onboard the network by using the same tools and wallets. You just need to add a new network to your MetaMask as the dropdown and you're already in and ready to use the Polygon ZK EVM. For developers, Polygon ZK EVM also allows any projects to migrate their existing Ethereum projects onto their this network with ease. All the tooling, programming language, and environments are the same as Ethereum, making for a super easy transition. Aside from the seamless support, Polygon's ZK EVM, and in fact, every other ZK rollup also have better security guarantees 
than optimistic rollups like Arbitrum or Optimism. At its core, optimistic rollups assume that the transaction batches are legitimate, so the rollups are legitimate, while ZK rollups need actual cryptographic validation. This means optimistic rollups are easier to use, less costly, and have lower programming complexity, but they have a delay in transaction finality and rely on users to ensure the correctness. On the other hand, ZK rollups guarantee the authenticity and security of all transactions at all times. Every transaction is cryptographically proven and synced with Ethereum constantly. This means users can immediately withdraw their funds from the layer 2 back to Ethereum layer 1, instead of waiting for the 7-day delay on Arbitrum. The downside is that ZK rollups will have higher gas costs and require clear cryptographic proof which is still in early stage technology. So how did Polygon transition from a legacy sidechain to one of the leading ZK rollup layer twos to launch on mainnet? This is all thanks to the three ZK technology teams under the Polygon umbrella, which are Polygon Hermes, Polygon Zero, and Polygon Maiden. In August of 2021, Polygon acquired Hermes Network, which was one of the leading teams building a ZK rollup for Ethereum. This deal cost Polygon $250 million, but gave them the Hermes token, user-based technology, and officially started their path towards a ZK future. Then in November 2021, Polygon announced their first official ZK rollup initiative called Polygon Maiden, which uses Stark-based proofs similar to StarkNet. Lastly, in December 2021, Polygon acquired another ZK company called Mirror Protocol for $400 million total in both Matic tokens and USDC. Mirror is a ZK proof technology company and they were rebranded as Polygon Zero. These three teams together started working on the suite of Polygon ZK solutions and after 15 months of development, we now have the Polygon ZK EVM. On the old Polygon website, all of these technology solutions were listed as separate product lines, such as Polygon Hermes, Polygon Zero, Polygon Maiden, Avail, Nightfall, etc. But now with the new Polygon ZK EVM officially launched, the only three solutions left are the old Polygon POS sidechain, which has the biggest user base, the newly launched ZK EVM, and Polygon Maiden, which uses Stark proofs and is coming in the future. So it seems that the three Polygon ZK technology teams were merged under the same ZK EVM solution. The last two product offerings on Polygon's roadmap are Polygon ID and Polygon Supernets. ID is pretty straightforward. It is a technology solution that lets users link their wallets to their identity and store verifications with zero-knowledge proofs on-chain. This allows users to prove that they are genuine without compromising on privacy. Polygon Supernets is an application-specific solution that lets enterprises run their own child blockchains under the Polygon network. We have seen a lot of similar solutions such as Avalanche Subnets, Starkware, Cosmos app chains, Arbitrum Any Trust, etc. So it seems that Polygon has covered every vertical of scaling solution for Ethereum now. No matter who the user is, they can always find the service that works for them. Whether you're looking for a POS sidechain or alternative layer one, you have the original Matic network. If you're looking for a layer two, you have the ZK EVM, or if you're an enterprise, you have Polygon Supernets. Now, despite being down significantly from its 2021 highs, Polygon's total value locked, or TVL, still stands at $1.1 billion, which is good enough to rank fifth for all blockchains today. TVL isn't always the greatest metric for network activity though, because TVL is based on token prices rather than what is being built and used on chain. So now let's examine the key milestones and ecosystem adoption of Polygon in the last few years. In April of 2022, Stripe, the large payment processor, uh, made a partnership with Polygon to let their clients make payments in USDC stablecoin. This integration first started with Twitter. In May of 2022, Meta and Instagram also announced that they will support NFTs on the platform. And the four main blockchains that they will support first include Ethereum, Polygon, Solana, and Flow. Later in August of 2022, Reddit, another tech giant, announced their partnership with Polygon to start airdropping Polygon-based collectible avatars. These new avatar NFTs are still being released today and are vastly popular among the Reddit user base, but more on this later. In September of 2022, Starbucks also announced that they will start to offer NFT-based loyalty program using Polygon's blockchain. In October, 2022, Polygon made an official partnership with the Indian police force to start recording complaints in their blockchain portal to combat 
per option. In November of 2022, Nike, the sports giant, launched their swoosh Web3 platform with Polygon NFTs. This platform, I think, will be launching in April of 2023. Definitely watch out for their NFT drop soon. Later in December of 2022, Polygon announced their partnership with The Graph, to bring their Web3 indexing service to the blockchain. You see the contrast here from enterprise adoption directly into the DeFi partnership integration. They really have all the verticals covered. Then two more NFT related partnerships came through in January of 2023 with Rarible and Fractal, two NFT marketplaces, both announcing their support for Polygon. And we did see the adoption in user side as well as by February of 2023, OpenSea already recorded that their Polygon NFT sales have topped the Ethereum NFT sales for the second straight months. Even though most of the popular NFTs with high floor prices are still being made on Ethereum, Polygon is the go-to choice for more retail-friendly, cheaper NFTs that have mass adoption. Now, from all of these major enterprise partnerships, we can start to see a pattern. Although Polygon doesn't stand out in the crypto degen or DeFi crowd against Arbitrum or BSC, Polygon does shine in enterprise adoption. Its partnership with Reddit, Starbucks, and Nike to release NFTs are all custom integrations, which hide away the crypto wallet experience from the user. For instance, there are actually 10 million Reddit collectible avatar NFTs out right now, and 7 million users are holding these avatars. Yet, when you go on Reddit to browse and trade them, most users aren't even aware that they are holding NFTs. Maybe this is what mass adoption looks like. This also explains why the crypto native crowd have not observed a large user base and transaction boost in Polygon, but their actual active wallet and transaction counts are are steadily increasing for the past two years. In Q3 of 2022, Polygon added 24 million new addresses and reached a new all-time high of 6 million active addresses. This brought the total number of unique addresses to 170 million. It's no doubt that Polygon has some of the best business development team in all of crypto, which helped them to close all of these enterprise partnerships. Their Swiss Army Knife approach to Ethereum scalability also allows them to onboard users from all fronts, whether that's a DeFi Degen using the new ZKEVM or a Reddit avatar collector who never have even touched a crypto wallet. So now you know the overall theme around the Polygon network and their scaling solutions. But going forward, I also want to share some of my concerns for Polygon's future. One of the most serious concerns I have for Polygon is in its decentralization or the lack thereof. As I mentioned earlier, they have a small hand-picked set of validators in their POS network. So they are really the ones who control the network. Unless you are using the new ZK EVM solution, all other Polygon solutions today are run by these set validators. This issue was brought up evidently in December of 2021, when the network was voting on a Polygon hard fork to fix an issue with gas fees and reorgs. The only ones who could vote on the network change were the 100 validators, and out of that set, only 15 validators voted, but the upgrade still passed. You probably didn't even hear of any hard fork going on or any hard our debates going on, but pretty much everyone agreed and all of a sudden the network implemented this feature. It's not great to have the fate of your network decided by 15 validators who are all in close connection with Polygon Labs, especially given that there's $1.1 billion locked up on the network. Another unfortunate issue is that a large supply of the Matic token is held by one whale address, which was linked to a Chinese MLM scheme. The reason I tell you this is that they've become the fifth largest holder of all Matic tokens. This is somewhat unsettling to say the least, and I really wish this concern can be addressed in the future. A third concern I have centers around Polygon's strategy to build multiple technologies at the same time, because their plans might sound good on paper, but they have struggled to bring these technologies to mainnet. Their first release of POS sidechain was 2019, and then their second release of the ZK EVM is in 2023, a four-year de delay difference. There's always a risk of trying to do too much at once, and seeing as how many other other projects are focusing on building each of these technologies individually, I worry that Polygon's divided approach could lead to execution issues and either a slow delivery or inferior product. Polygon products have had their issues before as their sidechain went offline for about 11 hours back in March 2022. And while this may not seem like much, it's a pretty big concern if you have a big ecosystem built on top. Now, with the first ZK EVM having launched, just completed in March, we'll find out soon enough if Polygon's Layer 2 technology can stack up against the other 
next-gen ZK rollups like ZK Sync, StarkNet, and Scroll. And don't forget the other giants, Arbitrum and Optimism, in the Layer 2 wars as well. They have to compete with everyone all at once. I'll be making a full comparison video breaking down all the Layer 2s in the near future, so subscribe to the channel to not miss it. Lastly, I also have some concerns about the Matic token itself. There are now plenty of large Layer 2 tokens launching this year, which could eat away at Matic tokens' valuation and market dominance. Before all of these players came up, if you wanted to speculate on Ethereum Layer 2 scene, Polygon was your number one bet. You buy Polygon if you were bullish on Layer 2s. But now with so many other competitors like Arbitrum who just launched their token and ZK Sync having confirmed their token plans for launch this year, I wouldn't be surprised to see some people liquidate their Matic tokens in exchange for these other shiny new Layer 2 tokens. Remember, new projects when they first hit the market are usually favored against the older ones. Polygon already has a high market cap as well of over $10 billion. So from an investment standpoint, its growth potential is also limited. It's almost impossible for Polygon to do another 100x like it did last cycle, or even 20 to 30x this time around. I think it would be even lucky to do a 5 to 8x in the next bull run, which would put it in the top 5 coin rankings. Becoming a top 5 crypto is hard enough, and to do it while new competitors flood the market will make it even harder. With that said, I still hold some Polygon in my portfolio because I do believe Polygon can at least outperform Ethereum in the next bull run. They are one of the top layer 2 solutions after all. And pairing Matic with Ethereum in a DeFi yield farming strategy can have amazing returns as they are both highly correlated and mutually beneficial. Okay, here are my final thoughts. Despite all the trouble it may face, Polygon still has a clear path forward. Polygon's goal is ambitious enough and exciting as it is, as they aim to be the de facto platform for Ethereum to achieve mass adoption in all user fronts. And while their centralized validator set is a concern for now, I expect this to be addressed in the medium to long term. If their ZK solution runs smoothly in the next few months, they'll really start to show that they can hold up their promise and my confidence in the project will only grow stronger. Another reason why I'm excited about Polygon's potential is because they're the only company building several layer two technologies like optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, app chains, and privacy chains. This is both a curse and a blessing as they will be able to latch on to every Ethereum layer two narrative. Whichever layer two ecosystem and technology wins, Polygon will have a foot in the door. This makes them extremely flexible and highly likely to survive in the long term, as long as Ethereum continues to thrive. So for these reasons, I see Polygon as a no brainer pick, assuming Ethereum continues to do well in the next cycle. Okay, that wraps up my Polygon deep dive and comparison today. If you like this type of ecosystem explainers, check out my other in-depth reviews of the other leading layer two crypto projects. If there are any other ecosystems you want me to cover, or if you have thoughts on Polygon, leave a comment below. Also check out virtualbacon.com for my free newsletter with over 11,000 friendly readers. Every week I write about the latest market events, hottest narratives, and my personal investing insight. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video.